Hello everyone and welcome to the Oklahoma News Report. I'm Taylor Jackson. Rich Lens will return next week. The legislature has been busy this week dealing with education reform bills as a crucial deadline approaches next week. Our Capitol correspondent Jason Doyle joins us to update what actions lawmakers took that could impact our classrooms. Jason. Taylor, the legislative session is headed toward an education reform showdown. Competing plans are making their way through the process, but it's much too early to tell what policies will make it to the governor's desk by the end of the session. The Senate will now come to order. Despite the shorter week due to spring break, the Oklahoma Senate continues to push Senator Adam Pugh's education reform proposals through. That includes Senate Bill 529, which is meant to recruit more teachers to the classroom, a major issue that Oklahoma and the rest of the country are facing. Senate Bill 529 establishes the Oklahoma Teacher Corps program. This pays tuition and fees for a potential teacher uh, should they receive their teaching certificate, uh, attend a college of education in the state of Oklahoma, and then um, they are obligated to teach four years in a Title I school in the state of Oklahoma. A Title I school receives federal funding to help close achievement gaps. Oklahoma schools receive about $200 million from the federal government for that effort. What happens um, if the individual fails to meet the obligation of the four-year requirement in a Title I district? Uh, let's say, for example, in, to the uh, question, Mr. President, that they taught for three years, they would pay one year back of their tuition and fees. Senate Bill 529 won approval from the floor with a bipartisan vote. Chair is preparing to close. Close the roll. Having received 44 aye and one nay, I declare the bill to have passed. Pew's Senate Bill 522 helps to incentivize experienced teachers to help newer educators. Senate Bill 522 provides a $500 stipend to all mentor teachers across the state, whether, um, and that is for teachers to receive mentorship, whether they are brand new teachers or just new to the district. That bill also gained the broad support of Senate members. I haven't received 41 I and one nay. I declare the bill to have passed. Pew and the other senators who helped carry the bills for his education reform agenda received similar support for the rest of the measures, as noted by Pew shortly after the legislation was sent to the Oklahoma House on Tuesday. You know, I've said many times, you can't get anything done in this building by yourself. And so my colleagues have really, you know, bought into uh, the reforms and the education package that I produced at the start of session. Pew also wants part of the reform to address early childhood reading. Senate Bill 528 would create a task force to address that issue. There was a lot of kind of disjointed components to early childhood literacy. And so the task force goal is to bring all those voices to one spot where someone like myself can just sit down and listen and give those experts the opportunity to share with each other. And he set a goal for that program. And I will not relent on this. This is important. By fourth grade, 100% of our kids should be on reading level. I know that's a big, bold goal, but I cannot stand in this building as a state senator and accept anything less than that. There's great support for it. Senate President Pro Tem Greg Treat says Pew's education plan has momentum. You know, when you get bipartisan support on something, a tough issue. Education rarely gets any bipartisan support, and it rarely gets a huge supermajority of one caucus or the other. And so I think it was proof in the pudding that he got such good votes. This comes just a week after House Speaker Charles McCall issued a challenge to the Senate not to amend or change his $800 million education reform proposals, which include $500 million for increased public school funding and teacher pay raises, as well as a tax credit for parents who send their children to private school or teach them at home. McCall added that if the Senate does change his bills, Senate education bills won't get heard in the House. And, you know, I said it was asinine last week. I stand by that. It's just, I respect Speaker McCall. He and I have a very good relationship, but that's just not the way the process works. The, the House sends us their bills. We send them our bills. They would expect to have ownership and be able to amend our bills however they see fit. We expect the same courtesy. What happens next on education bills in the House and Senate has yet to be determined, but that hasn't stopped the House from continuing to pass other education reforms this week. 
House Bill 1936 was passed from the House floor on Tuesday. Members, House Bill 1936 simply requires school districts to approve intra-district transfers unless the grade level of the receiving school is at capacity. The whole premise of this is that they can find the school to be to meet their um, educational needs. So, you know, if there are particular courses that they feel like would help them later on, um, then maybe that's the school that they need to go to. Baker notes that House Republicans are excited about the potential of Speaker McCall's education reform package. We just want children to be successful. We've heard from parents all across the state. We understand our public schools have to be supported. And we also understand that families that are choosing something different other than public ed have to be supported as well. So we do find it a win for every child. Both sides of the Capitol Rotunda hope that lawmakers will figure out the best path forward to benefit students.